Hey guys, today I have for you the Orpheus 2 Black Limited Edition Sound Card. I recently received this in the mail and I spent last weekend setting it up and testing it on a few games. I really think this is the ultimate retro gaming sound card. And it was an interesting series of events which led me to pull the trigger on buying this. Because it is quite expensive at a price tag of 380 euros. So about a month or so ago, LGR did a review of this card, though on a different color, green PCB. And after seeing the review, I was hyped to order it, but unfortunately I saw that they were sold out. I was a little bummed out, but figured, meh, maybe it was for the best as it is somewhat costly. I mean, the value is there, don't get me wrong, and it is worth the price, but just a little bit more than maybe I was willing to spend at the time. But I still had an itch to upgrade my sound card. At the time, the best sound card I had was a Sound Blaster 16 Vibra. And I was just looking for something a little more sexy. Uh, as I have an idea for my next build, something that I really want to consider the ultimate retro build. So I went on Vogons and started asking around for recommendations. And I signed up for email updates on the sound forum. And I can't remember if it was the next day or soon after I saw a post on the Orpheus thread, which broke the news that a few more Orpheus 2 uh, cards were available and in a black limited edition. So I took this as a sign and immediately pulled the trigger. So what makes this card so appealing to me is the inclusion of the interwave chip, which gives you Gravis ultrasound plug and play capability. You know, Gravis cards are extremely rare and expensive, and there are other replicas and clones out there. But given the other capabilities of the Orpheus card, it really was a no-brainer for me. As such, this card really is about options, and there are so many options on one card. In addition to the Gravis Ultrasound, you have Sound Blaster Pro, and you can choose between Yamaha OPL or Crystal FM. MPU 401, so if you have an external MIDI device like an SC55, you're covered. And a Wavetable header. I currently don't have any of these, but they're definitely on my shopping list. So this isn't meant to be a how-to video where, you know, I comprehensively give step-by-step -step instructions on how to set this up. It was a little complicated getting the Gravis going, mainly because I didn't know what I was doing. I'm not entirely sure I have everything patched correctly, but it sounds great for the most part, so I can't complain. You do have to install your own RAM to get full functionality, and by full functionality, I mean this is an absolute must. But the instructions in the DOS uh, initialization file are pretty straightforward. You know, I found myself going down a rabbit hole on the Vogons forums, getting into a deep discussion over the differences between Yamaha OPL3 and Crystal FM. And if you like to tweak and tinker, this card will definitely scratch that itch. So let's get into some games and games from probably my favorite era, 94, 95, really show how you can tailor your sound experience with this card through the many options. As a kid, I was just happy to get Sound Bluster Sound going, and I always wondered, you know, WTF, what Gravis was. Well, now I can definitely find out. I'm going to load up Descent 1 to cycle through all of the sound options, first in setup and then through actual gameplay. And keep in mind, when I select the general MIDI option, I am using a Roland SC55 sound canvas. Zero, zero, zero.
Well, that completes the demonstration for today. Please, if you enjoyed the video, hit like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let me know which option you like the best. Thanks.